Hello, I am Sean Gannon and this is Minute Math and in my left hand I have a ping pong ball and in my right hand I have a ping pong paddle. And today we're going to learn about the ping pong ball conundrum. Okay. Now the ping pong ball conundrum really doesn't involve any real ping pong balls and ping pong paddles but it is used nonetheless for the example. Now, I don't need those. So, the ping pong ball conundrum. Well, to get to the ping pong ball conundrum, I just love saying that, we have to know how to count. Now, I know you're saying to me, Sean, I know how to count, right? One, two, three, four, and five. I have five fingers on this hand. Yes. Well, hopefully we know how to count. If you know how to count, that's the first step for this video. First step to knowing how to solve this problem. Well, this conundrum, if you will. Well, the ping pong ball conundrum starts with the idea of how to count differently. How can we count differently? Okay. I know I have five fingers in this hand, and as the joke goes, I have actually four fingers and one thumb, right? But no, let's say five fingers on this hand, and we can count them. One, two, three, four, and five. And I have five fingers in this hand. One, two, three, four, and five. And I can determine that I have the same amount of fingers on both hands by counting one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and five equals five. So therefore, I have the same amount on both hands. If I was to have four on one hand, five on the other, I can determine that this hand had more than this one, because five is more than four. All right. But what if I did not know how to count? What if I didn't know how to count? Can I determine if I had the same amount of fingers on one hand as the other? Or maybe that one hand had more fingers than the other. Well, we can do that by matching. I can take the fingers on this hand, and the fingers on this hand, I can put my thumbs together, my pointer fingers together, my little fingers together, my ring fingers together, and my pinky fingers together. Match them up right here, and then I would be able to know, well, they're the same amount, right? I have the same number on both sides. I don't have to know how much is on each one, right? What that number is, but I know that they're the same. They have the same cardinality. I can pair them up. For example, like in your class in school, how would I know how many uh, students and chairs in, in the room? Are there more students or more chairs? Well, if every student is paired up with a chair, then and there's nothing left over, we have the same amount for both, right? Same number of students and chairs together. Okay, but if somehow there are a few empty desks in the classroom, we now know there are more chairs than students. And this is an important part. Now let me get some markers here. Oh, what color to go with? Let's go with red. Okay, so the ping pong ball conundrum uses this idea. Okay, so for this example, let's say we have a bucket. Okay, and in this bucket, it's an all right bucket, okay? It's an all right bucket. And this bucket has ping pong balls that flow into it forever and ever. And these ping pong balls are actually labeled one, two, three, all the natural numbers to infinity. They go into this bucket, okay? Now the goal is I have 60 seconds. I have 60 seconds on the clock and a whole bunch of ping pong balls are going to go in to a set rule, okay? So for my first rule is in the first 30 seconds, from 0 to 30, all right, seconds. From 0 to 30 seconds, the first 10 balls go in. So the first 10 balls, the first 30 seconds have to go into this bucket, all right? Then I have to go find ball number one. I have to find and take out ball number one, okay? I'd take out ball number one. So the first 30 seconds, first 10 balls go in, all right? Uh, well, 10 balls is number one through 10, right? 10 balls go in, and I gotta find ball number one, take it out. And I probably could do that, I'm pretty quick, I would say, and I can take out ball number one. So the what's left now is 30 seconds on the clock, right? 30 seconds have gone through, I have 30 seconds left. but from 30 seconds to 45 seconds, ball number uh, 11 through 20 go in, all right? Balls number uh, 11 to 20 fall into this bucket. 
I gotta find ball number two, and I take it out. All right, so in the next 15 seconds on the clock, I take ball number two out as balls are 11 through 20 go in. And I probably could find that. It might take a little bit of time, but I could do that. Well, I have 15 seconds left until 60 seconds is completed. I'm going to take that time, cut it in half, and that's 45 seconds to uh, 52.5 seconds, right? That's seven and a half seconds have gone by. I know my fives look like my S's, I'm sorry. And that is 21 through uh, 30, the number ball. Go in, and I have to take number three out. Now that's seven and a half seconds. If I'm lucky, I'm probably can get it, okay? And what we're going to do is this pattern keeps repeating. I take what time is left, so I have seven and a half seconds left here. I'm going to cut that in half, which is three and three-fourths of a second. Balls number 31 through 40 go into the bucket. I have to go find ball number four and pull it out, okay? And I keep taking as many, and this process keeps cutting in half, 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 half time as we get closer and closer to 60 seconds and more and more balls go in and more and more balls are taken out. So the real question is, after 60 seconds, how many balls are left in the bucket? After 60 seconds, how many balls are left in this bucket? I want you to pause the video and put your answer below. No peeking and see what you think. How many balls are left in the bucket? I'll wait, I'll wait. Waiting, 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 and okay, now we're going to talk about it. So, how many balls are left in the bucket? Well, zero. There are zero balls left in the bucket after 60 seconds. But I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, hold on, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. More balls go into the bucket, right? We, every single time, every single breakdown of time, we see 10 balls go into the bucket and you're only taking one ball out, right? You're only taking one ball out of the bucket. Now, obviously this isn't a real scenario because as time goes faster and faster, cutting half half time, I have to go faster than the speed of spat sound, speed of light, it just gets ridiculous, okay? And then let's not talk a whole, about, a whole bunch about the time travel with speed of light there, okay? But there are zero balls left in the bucket because we can show a pairing between every single ball that is taken out of the bucket and a time that occurs before 60 seconds. We have a window, right? Each one of these was a window of time. That window of time happens before 60 seconds and that pairing happens for every single ball that is taken out of the bucket. If you do not believe me, I give you this challenge. Find me a ball, name one ball that you cannot find a time it is taken out of the bucket before 60 seconds. And that's impossible. Any number you have, any ball number that's right there on that list, you can find an exact time or a range of a time in which that ball is taken out of the bucket, and therefore every single ball is taken out of the bucket. The same idea, same pairing that we had about our fingers matching them up with the same amount, with all the time that happens before 60 seconds, every single ball is taken out of the bucket. And there you have it. That is what we call the ping pong ball conundrum. Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, the creator of Minute Math. And if you like this video, please hit the like button that's right there. If you have a mathematical question, just add it to the comment section below. And lastly, if you want to see more videos just like this one, hit subscribe. It's right there. But as always, Thanks for watching.